In this video, we compare two of my favorite option trading strategies and answer the question, which is better, poor man's covered calls or covered calls? Let's get started. Before we dive into which option trading strategy is better, I briefly want to make sure that you know the difference between a covered call and a poor man's covered call. Here we see an example of a covered call that we're in right now in Realty Income, ticker symbol O. As you can see here, we own 300 shares of Realty Income. To turn this into a covered call position, we have sold three contracts of the January 21st $70 call options. Those three contracts equate to 300 shares worth of Realty Income. This is referred to as a covered call because of the person that we sold these three January 21st $70 call options call the stock away from us, we have the 300 shares to sell to them. With this call option, the owner of that option has the right to call Realty Income stock away from us at $70 per share at any time before this call option expires on January 21st. Covered calls are a strategy that work perfectly in a sideways or slightly increasing market environment. Realty Income has perfectly fit that scenario over the past year. Here you see a list of all the trades and dividends that we have received in Realty Income since we began selling options in it over a year ago in August of 2020. Here you see that on November 19th, we were assigned 300 shares that we now own at $65 per share. Since that time, we've been selling call options against our 300 shares while also collecting the dividend. Periodically, we have sold an additional cash secured put option in it. As a result of all these trades, as you can see here at the bottom right corner, our call space is right at $51 per share. Now keep in mind that as of the end of trading today, Realty Income was trading at $71.40 per share. On the left of the chart, at the base of this long white arrow, that's the day that we first started selling put options in Realty Income on August 19th of 2020. Realty Income was trading for right around $60 per share at that time. Fast forward 16 months to today, and Realty Income is trading for just over $71 per share. In all, it's up over 18%. Conversely, because we've been selling covered call options and collecting dividends in Realty Income during that same time period, since our cost basis is right at $51 per share, that means that we are now up over $20 per share or right at 40% in this position. All right, so you see a covered call position and the benefits of doing them, but what about a poor man's covered call? What does a poor man's covered call position look like? Here you see a poor man's covered call position that we're in right now with Apple. You see that we bought the June of 2023 115 call option. That cost us $41.78 per share. We were also short the near term January 21st 155 call option. For that, we were paid $7.88 per share. You see, the only difference in a covered call and a poor man's covered call is that instead of owning stock outright like we did with Realty Income, we own a longer term call option and are selling a near term call option against that. Here you see that as a result of selling three different near-term call options, even though this June of 2023 115 leaps call option cost us $41.78 per share back in August, our cost basis is currently down to $37.47 per share. Notice back on our portfolio tab that this June of 2023 115 call option is now worth $70.30 per share. Also, the January 21st, 155 call option that paid us $7.88 per share when we sold it, it has gone up in value, so that it's now worth $24.64 per share. So if we decide to close this position out right now, by doing some simple math, we said this position will be worth $45.66 per share. That means that we currently have a profit of $8.19 per share. And that's just in the four months that we've been in this position. That means that we're up over 19.5% based on the cost of the long-term June of 2023 115 call option. Again, another very profitable position. And actually, percentage-wise, a lot more profitable considering how short a time frame it's been that we entered this position. Please understand that this doesn't mean that every single poor man's covered call position that we're in is going to do better than a covered call. This is just two of the examples that I wanted to share with you to help you see exactly what a poor man's and covered call position looked like. So the ultimate question is, and probably the reason why you're here watching this video, which one is better, a poor man's covered call or a covered call? Let me re-ask that question a different way because the answer to that question is that it really depends on the situation. The question really should be, in what situations are a poor man's covered call better than a covered call and vice versa? To understand which trading strategy is best for different circumstances, it's important to understand some of the characteristics of these two option trading strategies. With both a covered call and a poor man's covered call, you're hoping that the stock will either trade sideways or possibly that it will go up in price slowly over time. 
The reason that this will allow you to pocket as much option premium as possible while minimizing the risk of the stock being called away from you because of a covered call or having to deal with the possibility of a call option being assigned to you in a poor man's covered call. If you're looking for simple and really easy, a covered call is probably the way that you want to go. The reason is that if the stock were to go way up in price, then you simply could leave it alone and let the stock be called away from you. You see, you can't do that with a poor man's covered call. Going back to our Apple position, notice that today, Apple closed at just over $179 per share. The current challenge that we are facing is that we sold the January 21st 155 call option. As a result, this 155 call option that we sold is $24 in the money. If we don't do anything about this over the next 24 days, then 100 shares of Apple will be called away from us. That could be a problem because we don't own 100 shares of Apple. We own a long-term call option. If we don't do anything about this position, then on January 22nd, the day after this 155 call option expires, we will still own our long-term June of 2023 115 call option, but we'll be short 100 shares of Apple stock that we'll have been forced to sell at 155 per share. As you can see, if you want simple and easy, then a poor man's covered call is probably not the best way to go. There are definitely some advantages to doing a poor man's covered call that I'll get to here in just a little bit, but they do require a little more management. Because Apple has gone up so much so fast, here you see that we have an order sitting out there right now to try and roll the January 21st 155 call option up and out to February 18th 160 call option. We've been trying to do that for a very small 10 cent per share credit. Now, I'm not too worried about this January 21st 155 call option being assigned to us yet because as you can see here, if you remember my little trick that I mentioned to you in other videos, if you have an option that's in the money, like this 155 call option is, if you want to keep an eye on how much time value is left in it, one quick and easy way is to look at how much the corresponding option has left in time value. Since Apple doesn't go ex-dividend before this expiration, we don't have to worry about figuring in any kind of dividends. So in looking at the 155 put option, we can tell that the call option probably has around 34 cents per share of time value left in it. This isn't exact, but share is pretty close. And why do we say that? Notice that this call option last traded for $24.64 per share. If you add that to the 155 strike price, it comes out to $179.64. If you back that off what Apple last traded for, which is $179.29, you see that there is roughly $0.35 cents of time value left per share in this option. That's why I say it's really easy and fairly accurate if there's no dividends to consider to look at the corresponding option that's not in the money to determine how much time value is left in your option. So we have about $0.34 cents per share of time value left in this option, so most likely we'll not be assigned this option right now. But I'm watching this on a daily basis, just keeping an eye out to make sure that it still has some time value left in it. When it gets under 10 cents per share, if this order hasn't been filled, at that point, I'll do something to adjust this position to avoid the call option from being assigned to us. Another factor to consider is if the underlying stock is a dividend paying stock. If receiving dividends is important to you, like it is to me, then most likely, if it's a decent sized dividend, then you'll want to trade in covered calls as compared to poor man's covered calls. You see, with a poor man's covered call, since you don't own the underlying stock, you don't have right to receive the dividends. Dividends are only paid to investors that own the stock. That's why if we are trading in a company that pays a decent dividend, I would generally pick to do a covered call over a poor man's covered call because I want to receive that dividend. However, if it's a non-dividend paying stock, or the dividends are very low, like it is here of Apple, notice that Apple's dividends are only 22 cents per share. In this instance, that 22 cents per share, to me, it just isn't worth it because of the other benefits that we receive by doing a poor man's covered call versus doing a covered call. One final factor I want to point out to you that may be viewed as a disadvantage of doing a poor man's covered call is what happens if a stock goes up in price really fast. Now we know that with a covered call, as a stock goes up in price, if the short option goes in the money, it too will go up in price really fast, but your stock will match that increase in price. Matter of fact, let's look at an Apple example here. Let's look at this 155 call option that we sold that expires next month in January. Notice what the delta is on the call option. The delta on this January 21st 155 call option is 95.3 cents per share. That means for every dollar that Apple goes up, this option's value will increase by 95.3 cents per share. And that's fine if you own a covered call, because as the underlying stock goes up in value by $1, of course the value of the stock that you own will also go up in value by $1. 
However, that's not the case with a poor man's covered call. Now keep in mind that this option that we sold that expires next month, the January 21st, 155 call option, that it goes up 95.3 cents per share for every dollar that Apple goes up. So the question is, how much will the call option that we own, the June of 2023 115 call option, how much will it go up in value for every dollar that Apple goes up in value? Now I'll switch to the option chain for June of 2023. Notice that the 115 call option that we own, that the delta of that option is 89.6. That means that this option's value will go up at 89.6 cents per dollar for every dollar that Apple goes up. Do you see the problem here? The option we've sold that expires next month is so deep in the money that it actually goes up in value by 5.7 cents per share more per dollar move than the option that we own. So this position could actually lose money for where it is right now if Apple continues to go up. Now it doesn't lose much, only 5.7 cents per dollar, but it is something that you want to keep in mind if you're going to use poor man's covered calls. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. So we spoke about some of the disadvantages of doing a poor man's covered call versus doing a covered call. And if you left the video right now, you'd probably think that poor man's covered calls weren't any good and I didn't really like them. However, that would not be accurate or true. Now let me tell you some of the reasons why in certain situations I prefer, actually why I insist on only doing poor man's covered calls. In my opinion, poor man's cover calls are a secret weapon for option traders that only few traders completely understand and use properly. Let's go back to that last scenario that I laid out for you and one of the weaknesses of poor man's covered calls. Remember that sometimes if the call option you sold goes deep in the money, it might actually go up in value faster than the call option that you own. Let's go back to Delta because it's a very important point I want to make sure that you understand about poor man's covered calls. Remember that the Delta of the 115 call option that we own is 89.6. Now that's actually a good thing if Apple were to go down in price. The reason that instead of this call losing a dollar for every dollar that Apple drops in price, this option will only lose 89.6 cents per share for the next dollar that Apple drops in price. And if Apple continues to drop in price, the Delta will continue to go down. That means as Apple drops in price, we'll lose less value in this long-term option as compared to if we own the underlying stock outright. That's one reason why I love trading in leaps options. Depending on what strike price you own, it won't lose value penny for penny compared to the underlying stock if the stock goes down in price. And as the stock continues to go down in price, the delta move in our direction causing us to lose a lesser amount compared to the underlying stock. Remember that today, Apple's trading at 179. So if we look at the June of 2023 170 call option, which is barely in the money right now by $9, that option will only lose 63.3 cents per dollar that Apple drops in price. If you're trading in a poor man's covered call, the position goes against you or declines in price, you'll be thankful that you own a poor man's covered call versus owning a covered call. So speaking of when things go against you, here's another advantage of doing a poor man's covered call. Remember that the June of 2023 115 call option that we bought, remember that it only cost us $41.78 per share to buy that option. Remember that it's gone up in value by almost $30 per share since we bought it four months ago. That's important because when we bought that option back on August 27th, as you can see here, Apple's trading for around $148 per share. If we would have done a covered call, it would have cost us $14,800 to buy 100 shares of Apple. How much did it cost us to buy that long-term call option as a part of our poor man's covered call position? Remember, it only cost us $41.78 per share or $4,178 to enter the same position. By doing a poor man's covered call, we're able to take a bullish position in the Apple and risk only 28% of what it would cost us to do a covered call position. Do you like risking 75% less and receiving almost 100% of the potential reward? I don't know about you, but I really like when I can put the odds of winning more in my favor while risking less of my hard-earned cash. If you'd like to receive alerts, we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video. Consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how to use poor man's covered calls and leaps options to generate awesome cash flow in return, check out the video series, the link above in the description below entitled Leaps Options. What are they and how do they work? Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.